four or five people to come. In the meanwhile, let me invite uh, my colleague, Professor Kannan Maudgalya, on this side of the table. He said, I don't feel lonely. Varda, you all can come and sit here. You come from that side. Come from that door. All right, so once again, a warm welcome. I'm particularly delighted to welcome you here because this building, uh, unlike most other buildings, was constructed solely by the contributions from alumni. There is not a single piece of government money in this. It was essentially uh, Nandan Nilekani and Kanwal Rekhi who contributed to the setting up of the School of IT then and a whole lot of initiatives which have stemmed from this building through the academic entity. Uh, today we had planned just two things, a brief presentation and discussion on what we are doing on use of technology in education and visit to some of the labs for those who are interested. After we finish the discussion session, I request you to go out and have a quick cup of tea which is being arranged outside and then you can sort of move down or uh, uh, labs are on the ground floor, which is almost like basement for this building. Uh, because as you know, in IIT there are multiple ground floors. So this is the lowest ground floor. that, you, And from there itself you can move out either the way you came back or in the front. All that. So we have divided our uh, discussions in two parts. Although there is a whole lot that is happening, mostly supported by the government through the National Mission on Education through ICT, but quite independently, a lot of activities that have been going on. It usually takes two full days to visit various labs and various activities. We are trying to give you a very short glimpse of whatever is being attempted here. As you are all aware, IIT is committed to solve the national problem of providing quality, I mean, scale and diversity, which is extraordinary and to provide skills, knowledge, and livelihood, which is a more holistic definition of education as we understand it. But in many educational institutions, that does not happen currently. We believe that education technology holds an extremely important promise to reach out to this large scale of masses. Learning resources such as Wikipedia and many others are still mainly available in English and not in Indian languages. That is another dimension which we are perpetually addressing. And it will take far more efforts than just one institute's effort any. Anyway. So content delivery and access, and then finally, teaching, learning, and assimilation are the steps. We started our forays by trying to develop clicker devices, which you would have seen. Uh, in India, they are not very popular. But these are the devices which were used, for example, by Amitabh Bachchan in Kaun Banega Karodpati to get the opinions of the audience. We felt that if we could get the opinion and the knowledge of the students tested live during a classroom, then it will give a teacher a chance to immediately address any lacuna. So if I observe that 70% students are answering wrongly, I can immediately give a new example and explain that which is not possible if I depend on the conventional test, which will tell me two weeks later how weak the students are. Uh, since the foreign devices were costly, we decided to design them here. This first device was designed and developed and built in about 673 rupees here in the Affordable Solutions Lab. Then we provided a small screen here in the second device, cost us about 1,000, by far the cheapest devices. Subsequently, when we worked on the Akash tablet project, we actually migrated the clicker application onto Akash. And the Akash tablets are routinely being used, not only here, but in many other colleges where we have distributed those tablets for conducting live quizzes in the classroom. Professor Kannan probably is the best expert of using these devices. For the last five years, he has been running flipped classrooms for his class, uh, ensuring a much greater engagement and he uses these to ensure that the students are actually 
attentive. As you all know, if you just tell IIT students or any other students that this is very important knowledge and you should seek it, hardly 5 percent will actually pay attention. But if you say there is a half mark quiz associated with it, probably 100 percent will pay attention. So we do that in most of our classes which use flipped classroom. We have this half mark, one mark quiz every day on the material that is discussed during that class itself and that proves to be useful. This is the Akash tablet. As you know, this is not exactly an innovation in technology, but this was an innovation in affordability. It was an innovation in providing large amount of useful educational content and applications. So we charged with the responsibility of procuring one lakh tablets for which we gave the specifications. We procured them and distributed them to 300 colleges. More than 12,000 students were trained across the country. More than 10,000 teachers were trained. And in these colleges, final year students did variety of projects for implementing new applications, new content. All of them are made available as a policy in open source, released under Creative Commons license. And they are all available on uh, akashlabs.in, which is the uh, portal. You can easily search for it. Any student, not only in India, but anywhere in the world can download those apps. All of them work well on Android and all of them work well on Linux as well. In fact, one of the objectives was that we will not limit ourselves to only one operating system. And this was Professor Kannan's idea to provide not only Linux on the device, but also to provide engineering experimentation using additional attachments to it. So this is one such experiment where his team had designed a small circuit called Anudino, Anu for small, which is based on the Arduino, which is a uh, open source uh, uh, well-established platform. You can see that a temperature curve is being drawn here. There is a small temperature sensor here. And this whole additional device, including the cable, costs 90 rupees only. So we have been committed to provide inexpensive experimental tools for a large number of people, not necessarily to college students, but even for the school students. As I told you, uh, many applications are ported onto Akash. So Scilab, which is the equivalent of the commercial product MATLAB, works perfectly well on Akash and therefore on any Android and on any Linux machine. We have a great initiative across the country called Virtual Labs to provide experimentation through remote labs. This is being coordinated by IIT Delhi, but a large number of people across all IITs are participating including IIT Bombay. If I'm not mistaken, about eight or 10 people can then, who are working on, huh? 14, 14 faculty members in different disciplines are working on these virtual labs here. There are open source content being created by NCERT, which are being made available to all students. Uh, NCERT, as you know, is the institution uh, meant for R&D in school education. Now, this is about content, but content alone does not translate into knowledge. My favorite axiom is that if access to quality content meant knowledgeable people, then librarians would have been the most knowledgeable people in the world. And there is no evidence to show that. So knowledge acquisition is actually the act of an individual mind. When the mind is applied, when discussions happen, when activities happen, then people learn. Towards that, we said that teachers are important. And we should concentrate on training teachers in engaging students. So we started a T10KT project, which stands for training 10,000 teachers at a time. This is built on the scaling up of a model of QIP programs, where we typically train 35 to 40 teachers in a two-week intensive course. The cost of that program used to be about 14,000 rupees per participant, because you have to assemble students, I mean teachers from all over the place, and the local experts three or four of them, their cost, their honorarium, et cetera, et cetera, will be amortized only over 40 people. In 2000, when we were building our distance education program, uh, using VSATs earlier and then using internet, we decided that we will extend and extensively use this distance education program, primarily concentrating on teacher training. So we made a proposal first to TIFAC and then to ministry that we will train teachers in large numbers. And we will do so by establishing remote centers across the country. We have established 
more than 300 remote centers, over 500 more applications are available. These are all engineering colleges. Our model of training is very interesting. In the morning, these 10,000 teachers who assemble at these remote centers listen to interactive lectures delivered from IIT Bombay or from IIT Kharagpur, which is another hub like us and partner here. Uh, these interactive lectures are actually two-way interactive. So anybody in Coimbatore asking a question to our faculty here can be seen and heard by somebody in Calcutta and it effectively makes an enlarged classroom for the whole body. In the afternoon, these participating teachers at their respective centers are taken through tutorials and discussion sessions and lab sessions under the supervision of a local workshop coordinator. One of the worries that we had was will these tutorials and labs be conducted in exactly the same rigorous fashion as we do them in IIT? Because when teachers are trained here, they have to undergo that rigor. To ensure that, what we started doing is, we would get these workshop coordinators from all these 300 places to IIT Bombay for a one-week intensive program, two months ahead of the main training workshop. And we will make them go through the same labs and same tutorials with the same rigor, and also understand from them the peculiarities of their own teaching of that subject in their respective places. Then they go back, set up those labs, etc. While the labs are being conducted, they are in constant touch with us through the same two-way communication and the queries and answers can be given even during the afternoon session. This program has turned out to be very effective. We had promised to train 1,50,000 teachers in three years. Two years of the project are over and we have actually trained 1 lakh teachers of engineering college is by far the largest number of engagement with teachers anywhere in the world that we know. <laughs> this is a glimpse of the coordinators workshop where all the coordinators come here. They are taken through the same steps in the morning they have interactive sessions and in the afternoon they have to do the labs and other things. This is one of the remote centers. This is again my favorite because you will see a lot of ladies in this remote center. There are a few men who are sitting sheepishly behind. We have constantly got mails from a large number of lady teachers across the country thanking us for organizing such training programs at remote centers because they say it would have been impossible for us to leave our families for two weeks and come to IIT Bombay to undergo this training. In fact, Professor Kandan proudly says that we are empowering 50% of the nation's population by, by these mechanics. The participation by lady teachers in our programs varies between 39% to 52% depending upon the nature of the subject, which again is I think an important contribution IIT Bombay is making. You must have heard of massive open online courses. We started working on these three years ago. So this is, these are the courses that are being offered from IIT Bombay X, which is nothing but the extended online education services of IIT Bombay. Our center for distance engineering education program is the administrative unit in charge of this, just like continuing education program runs face-to-face -face workshops. Uh, we have, we learned by offering these courses in partnership with EDX globally. We had some 85, 90,000 students in three subjects. We learned from it bettered the courses and then offered them for Indian students. And those were offered last semester, this semester again they are being offered in a further extended mode which I will describe. There are online courses being offered by NPTEL. As you know, this is one of the largest programs of creating course content like Open Courseware of MIT. There are more than 1000 courses now available. These are essentially web courses or video courses, but recorded lectures and some examples. These are not MOOCs, but based on those, MOOCs are being prepared and MOOCs are being offered by NPTEL. There is an interesting and important effort from IIT Kanpur, who where Professor Prabhakar runs MOOCs on MOOCs, and they also offer courses. Now they are empowered to, they, they have been asked to run courses on agriculture. You must have heard of Swayam. The work on Swayam is progressing. CDAC is the organization which has been entrusted with building Swayam and it will probably happen in next few months or within a year. The effort is that we must use this technology to reach out to largest number of people. 
effectively scaling the quality as well. IIT Bombay suggested a blended MOOCs approach because all over the world, the MOOCs which are offered, they are offered by the best known teachers from the best known institutions, whether it is Harvard or Stanford or MIT or Oxford or whatever. But these are not part of the mainstream. Some honor course certificate is given and people do not find too much value for that certificate because the universities don't accept those grades. We said that we need to complement face-to-face education by the MOOCs-like education. So we defined a blended MOOCs approach where we combine the face-to-face -face education and learning through MOOCs. The idea is very simple. A teacher in Coimbatore decides that his students will learn from the MOOCs on that subject from IIT Bombay. Students are advised to register for that MOOCs. Classes are held regularly in, in uh, Coimbatore. But the students are also required to pass exams online. Most important, their final grade for that subject for their university will come from the combination of their marks in their own evaluation and marks obtained through MOOCs. Now, this is for the first time that is happening. There are institutions and universities which have adopted MOOCs for regular teaching in the university, but these are located, these are isolated for individual universities only. There is no example where multiple institutions across the country come together to accept these grades from the MOOCs as part of their own grades. The flipped classroom where students study these online lectures and come to the class only for discussion and problem solving session. This has been attempted and perfected over last several years led by Professor Karnan and many other teachers and there are uh, scientific evidence gathered by our ET faculty Professor uh, 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 Professor Sahana Murthy and Professor Sridhar saying that the students engagement enhances from average 40 percent to average 80 percent and that is because in every lecture students are forced to actually discuss and solve problems and basically learning is much more effective. We know that we want to spread this message to all others. Others cannot do it because they do not have recorded lectures, MOOCs make those lectures available. An active learning where student participation is enhanced is also being attempted. All our teachers across the country will have to learn these new pedagogies just as we learned over the last four or five years. But this we believe will be the next effective uh, learning program. So as I mentioned, we believe that it's a global first pilot. We are offering some same three courses now to all learners, but these are now not six week or eight week courses, but these are four month courses spanning the entire semester, along with one lakh or two lakh students who will register for these courses from all over the country. We expect about 50,000 students of these 50 institutions will register and these students will benefit. And for the first time in the country, they will get grades, which are a combination of MOOCs grades and their own grades. That is all I have to say. I will request Professor Kannan to speak about his other initiatives. Uh, good afternoon. My name is uh, Kannan Modgalia. I um, entered IIT. 10 years after you did. I joined in 1975. <laughs> yeah, I studied at IIT Madras. Um, the first thing that I want to um, pass around is our uh, laptop. This is the one that uh, was mentioned just now. This is the uh, improvement over Akash. Let me just, uh, just gone to sleep. Just have a look at this, pass it around. Hmm. Yeah, I could have got one more. So this is um, um, what has been advertised as uh, less than $100 laptop. We uh, bought it at uh, 4990 plus tax, below 5000 plus tax. Uh, now, of course, the uh, rupee has devalued further, but still it is about 6,500 of the order of, okay. 
uh, but base price uh, was 4990 with taxes ex excise and so on it came to 5820 to us we bought 1000 of them at 58 lakhs and we are doing experiments to see whether um, it's a good device uh, it turns out that uh, cs 101 students um, of iit bombay um, used it because 50 of them didn't have their own machines so the ta of the course did a thorough study of this and found that this was good enough. And for a CS 101 course, out of 450 students, 400 have their own computers, 50 don't have their computers. Then we thought it was an unequal competition. And uh, so we gave this machine and they used it. And uh, interestingly, there were six students who had MacBook Air. And uh, one of the programs meant for the course didn't run in this. So they came and complained to me that I was discriminating. I didn't give it to them because we gave it only to people who didn't have um, any computer. The project that I want to talk to you is uh, uh, Spoken Tutorial. Okay. So before I go to that, I just want to uh, take you to our uh, MHRD's home page. So, this is MHRD GOV dot IN. Yeah. So, if you can see, just let us go to the second one, third one. So, starting from here, these are all projects. FOSI is a project at IIT Bombay. By the way, we are on MHRD home page. And then uh, design courses, e kalpa is done by uh, my colleague Ravi Puvaya in IDC. Swakan tutorial I talked to you about. E antra is uh, done by Professor Kavi Arya. Once again, he is uh, in this building, computer science faculty member. Uh, NPTEL, of course, you know about. T10KT is uh, what Professor Fatak talked about. So, out of the six uh, banners on MHRD website homepage, five are offers. Five are being done at IIT Bombay. So, that shows that uh, in a very short time, NPTEL of course is a huge affair. It has been going on for a long time, but our projects in a very short time have reached that level. So, it is, um, so that is one thing I wanted to talk to you. So, let me just go there. I am a co PA of this uh, FOSI project. Uh, by the way, the OIS for that was put together by one of the staff members of the FOSI project. In fact, we call it as FOSI laptop. Now, let me, uh, I can also click here. It will say that do you want to go there? If I say yes, it will take me to my home page. So, we get direct traffic from all over the country. All who go to MHRD home page will come to our pages. Um, you can see that uh, it is an initiative of uh, NMEICT to promote IT literacy through open source software. That is what we do in this project. We called it Spoken Tutorial because uh, in the year 2007 when I started doing this, uh, there were many silent videos on YouTube on using software and so on. We thought that spoken words were a lot more important. And the other thing, uh, other reason was um, you do not see the video of the person who is speaking. You only see the voice and of course, you see the screenshot. So, uh, that is the second reason to call it a spoken tutorial. Third one, I will tell you shortly why it is the spoken word is extremely important in our project. Uh, these are all series of um, tutorials. Okay. So, let me take uh, so various topics. Uh, for example, C is the most popular one. Let me see where is C, C and C++. This has been the most popular one. And we also dub this into various languages. Not sure whether audio will come. Let me just see.
Okay. So this is just an example. Thank you. Thank you. And of course, what this does is, of course, we have it in English. We start in English and then dub it into all languages. We make this tutorial suitable for self-learning by creating the script first and then subjecting it to through beginners. The beginner has to certify that they can reproduce all the steps. Then we record it. Then we run pilot workshops and so on. And we put in a lot of effort for a 10 minute tutorial. And all the programs required, supposing for example in this example, uh, she says open some file, for example my first C program, that file is also given here. If you see code files, it is all given here. So in this, it is a, it's a complete environment, it tells you the, um, the outline of this assignment, it gives slides, it also um, gives, this, gives the script, okay. Script of course you heard. So here is the script. So we write it in English first, we um, subject it to novice check, we record it, freeze it and then we translate sentence by sentence and then ask a person to give the voice and then uh, overlay this voice onto the original video. So we have this in all languages, let me show one other. Basically, what it says is that we can provide this technology even to linguistic minority groups, even if there is no expert in that language. And uh, because it is created for self-learning, uh, it is being used in a very big way. And uh, I can show you some statistics here. Uh, we have trained uh, a total of uh, uh, more than 8 lakh uh, people until uh, today. And, uh, the number of people trained this year uh, is already 2.63 lakhs and uh, y the details are all coming here. You can see that there is a workshop. Yeah. Okay. So, I think that is. Uh, Yeah, I think that's all. Yeah. Uh, would like to leave you have a five minutes. Sorry, you have a question. Yeah. Translation. Yeah. It is. We are doing it manually. We are doing it manually. By the way, you the translation a mechanism created is also it uses crowdsourcing. So you identify good uh, people like that, and then they are given some honorarium. So it's not very expensive. Yeah, is a question on this. Yeah, so these, as Professor Kannan said, these spoken tutorials are meant for self-learning. Any person can learn. Need not be a student, need not be a teacher. For example, some of the most popular uh, 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 spoken tutorials have been these productivity enhancement tools such that open office and so on, which are being learned by clerical staff across many organizations in the country. Uh, oh, absolutely. Everything, everything that we do is necessarily released under Creative Commons license, including the software that we create. It is, it is absolutely free. There could be some services that some people might give. So, for example, if I arrange a one-day workshop or two-day workshop, people have to be given a cup of tea. See, as many of our American friends say, there is no free lunch. So the lunch, some money has to be spent. But we have found time and again that a large number of people do this as a voluntary work without charging. Hmm. Yeah, we are already, uh, we have online.
online uh, tests, typically about 25% um, uh, of the people take this, uh, take undergo test. The reason is, um, uh, one of the reasons why we could uh, do this in big numbers. For example, uh, there are days when 1,000 people undergo training on a single day across the country in uh, maybe 15 different locations. The reason why that happens is we have come up with a method. If you look at uh, this software training, uh, there is something called create your own disk image. If you go there, you can select this FOSS category, you can select the level languages, and then you add, a, uh, add the selected FOSS, and then create a zip file, it will give you this image. So you need only one uh, internet connection in a college. If a college does not have even that, we can send this zip file in a CD. Then they can copy this into every machine, unzip it, open it, it will open in Firefox or Chrome, it will give you the look and feel of the web page, but it will open from local file. Okay? Unfortunately, this cannot be done for uh, online tests. For tests, we need to have, we need to preserve our questions. So, uh, we have tried various things, uh, but um, that is one of the reasons why that number is small. Yeah. But uh, assuming that the internet uh, facility is there, connection is there, uh, we have the thing in uh, many uh, topics. IIT Bombay X, which necessarily conducts evaluations online, uh, that platform will now be used to conduct such tests as well. Although we are not very clear how valuable these certifications would be. So it all depends upon the acceptance by society and the employers and so on. Uh, well, for me, as I shared with you, after I leave IIT, I am committed to work for 10 years for school education. But the institute is not letting me go. So next year, when I actually retire the second time, I will start working on that. Uh, there is already a primary school project in Madhya Pradesh to engage a primary school students into active learning. Our industrial design center is participating in designing the curricula from a different point of view. We are giving 700 Akash tablets to those schools to do that experiment. In using Akash, we have actually done a school pilot, but for ninth standard students to teach them science and maths. But these efforts need to scale up. And scaling up, frankly, I don't believe that scaling up should happen entirely through government funding. There has to be an ecosystem which will evolve, and that will only spread across the country. I'm hoping that it should happen soon. I will also tell you something that for education technology interdisciplinary program where we have been hiring faculty, and the director, Professor Devan Kakkar, gave directions to me and uh, Sridhar Iyer when we went to meet him. He said there is no need to restrict employing only those faculty members who work in higher education. You should employ education technology specialists who work in school education also, because education technology spans all boundaries. It's a very wise decision by the institute. And we'll be looking forward to such faculty members now. Uh, I have on the screen a review done by uh, midday um, on our laptop. And uh, they have given, of course, uh, they have not given any special concession because it is a low cost laptop. Uh, they have uh, reviewed it on an absolute basis. For example, when they talk about uh, performance, they say, oh, yeah, it's not that good. But then what do you expect from this machine and so on? But uh, when, it, when it comes to operating system and apps, which is what we developed, they have given 9 out of 10, if you can see. And connectivity, all the ports and so on, they have given 8 out of 10. And overall rating is 7.1 out of 10. Yeah, and so now uh, we are, sorry. yeah, sorry. Yeah. Uh, we are actually uh, asking ourselves if IIT Bombay students can benefit, CS101 students of IIT Bombay can benefit by this machine, why not extend this to the CS101 students of other colleges? And then, uh, in fact, I talked to somebody in Google to today whether they will be interested in supporting this. Um, uh, because in IIT, uh, presumably more wealthy students attend. There are uh, other places where uh, 
uh, you know, you have people who can't afford uh, rural areas and even science colleges and so on. All of them have to learn C programming. Actually, Professor Fatek said that the most popular one is uh, office software. Actually, the amongst the students, the most popular software is C programming. We have trained uh, 1.6 lakh students out of, uh, that's 20 percent of all students, and, uh, I mean, we trained is in C. The reason being, uh, all IT companies conduct a C test at the time of interview. <laughs> so it is actually employment, employment, employment. That's what matters. So this is going to help these children enormously. Uh, most Mumbai college students are day scholars. So if they get a doubt at, at in the night, so they might have a computer in the lab, but they have to wait till the next day. So uh, I just talked to the Google people whether they will be interested in sponsoring a project and uh, where a college can buy a certain number and give it to the students at 3,000. Uh, and then after one year, they have to return. Because it also turns out that most colleges say, in the first year, don't bring a computer from the second year onwards. But then it will be nice to have a computer because half the ch uh, some children may have computers at home, some children don't have. So you can actually give this computer 3,000 at the end of the first year. They can, you can either pay the balance and take the, ma uh, take the machine or they have used up that 3,000, return it. Then within uh, two years, it will pay off. And um, so it can actually be run on a self-sustaining mode. So I thought it will be a good activity and that in that way at a very low cost we can actually empower all our children and those children uh, and there might be some people who will say well actually I don't want to keep it for more than one year next year I want to buy a better machine okay you're not tied to that the expenditure is only 3000 but you have got to use a computer for whole year for 3000 that you're not going to get in any other way there is also an urgent need to build an ecosystem across the country for most of these efforts because sadly the government budgets for the education are getting pruned. For the last uh, almost eight months, we have not received any release of funds for any of these projects. In fact, uh, last month itself in desperation, I said I will put back my fundraising hat once again and go around uh, collecting uh, donations from alumni and uh, through CSR funding. But we are desperately looking at a mechanism to speed up setting up of this ecosystem which will be self-sustaining. As it is, as I said, I don't believe that government funding should perpetuate in supporting these activities. So some of these efforts are on those lines. Thank you. Uh, so I'll request you, there is a cup of tea just outside uh, you can, of course, exit from either of the doors. Please do have a cup of tea. And on the ground floor, there are two labs, the video lab, video editing lab, and our Akash lab, the affordable solutions lab, which Professor Karnan heads now are open. Those of you who are interested can go down on the zeroth floor on the lift. And as you walk towards that other door of entry, just around them, those are the labs there. You're most welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming. This one is uh, teacher getting his life. Uh, what uh, the teach uh, train 10,000 teachers that was part of the board, where he said that uh, one lakh people have been trained, another 50,000 will be trained. Whereas the spoken tutorial based training that I talked about is completely asynchronous. That's online. That's all available. They don't even have to.
So the next process is that I talked about is uh, asynchronous, that people will be doing it at different times. Completely asynchronous. Then how do you sort of have it? Uh, so the online test, they have to do, uh, they have to take it. They claim to have 1 lakh members or 4 lakh members, various numbers they talk about but minimum 1 lakh. Uh, we try to tell them why don't you make this available for free. In fact people can even make money out of this for day. Why don't you offer it in 8 hours, your income will double. But on the other hand they, they, can, they can even say that in order to make your experience better, We'll give you a headphone.